Evidence-based design is a term that was coined off of the notion of evidence-based medicine. So evidence-based medicine is looking at all of the studies that have been done on a particular outcome or treatment, synthesizing all that information together, and then understanding what all those studies tell you. At its core, the issue is about trying to uh, prove or, or, or validate design intuition. And so the concept is, you know, can, uh, the, can a creative act of design of, of architecture, of, of building hospitals, can a creative act be, be codified in a series of laws and rules and can you somehow justify or prove that one design is better than another design? It's much easier to make an investment in additional space and not deal with the really, really hard work. Um, the, the fallacy of, of more space, and, and we've proven that we can't build our way out of this problem. I mean, I've seen so many emergency departments that have either increased their size by 33% or 50% or 100% and because they did not address the really tough work of managing process in a more efficient way, you basically designed efficiencies out of the system because you lose visual cues for management, the, the distances that the staff have to walk, the places for people to hide, all become intensified in new larger space. Evidence-based design is a social science, not a clinical trial. It's very hard to isolate variables when you're talking about how people behave, how people react, or people's perception. Because of the, the nature of healthcare, it's one of the more obvious building types to be um, overshadowed by pure function. Because there is a, a, you know, a very known process, it's a very known function, and if you apply the proper um, kind of metrics, you, you could create something that works. But it's more in a factory. Right? You know, we're not creating, you know, factories or machines for healings. I mean, for healing, we have to create um, a space for, for life and, and for, for people. It's really very hard for people to remember what they do every day. So research helps us see what they're doing and point that out to them. Well, did you realize um, that you were actually doing a workaround because you can't get actually directly into that supply room so you have to go through another unit to get supplies. Oh, I didn't realize that. Well, that's just what we've always done. And that's where the, the art of architecture comes in, where you have to look at, okay, we've met the functional requirements of the hospital, the space will function well, but then how do you now create um, a space which will affect people in, in, the, in a proper way? How do you create something which is beautiful and lasting? Um, a design which has a strong idea behind it, which is uh, tied into the community and, and actually adds to the urban environment and it, it helps the people and the patients as they, as they um, interact or, or go to the, the hospital. And so designing processes and then designing um, architecturally um, the, the designs that actually help foster that, uh, I think over the next 10 years is going to be the most important factor in, in generating the success of these emergency departments.